This channel is proudly sponsored by the upcoming Demon Ninja Kickstarter, a tabletop RPG of horror and redemption in a dark Japan. Please check out the links to the Kickstarter and to my ongoing review of the core book in the pinned comment and in the description of this video. And the Red Room. Please check out the link to the store also in the pinned comment and in the description. Here's a promo for one of their games. In the heart of darkness, where shadows waltz with unhinged madness, I have gazed into the abyss and found a truth so stark it burned my soul. The shadow war begins now. Are you ready for the new flesh? Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the Castle Ultima tabletop role-playing game. If you haven't seen part 1 of my review featuring this tabletop RPG of old school adventuring in another realm, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about character creation. There are 8 steps to character creation. You roll for attribute scores. You choose a race, attribute scores, and select one racial ability. You choose a class, attribute scores, and select one class ability. You choose a profession, attribute scores, and write down your profession's starting ability. You determine your secondary statistics such as armor rating and hit points. You determine your skill modifiers. You get your equipment. And finally, you give your character a name and a simple backstory. Let's talk about attribute scores. They are pretty easy to understand if you have played any version of Dungeons and Dragons or any pseudo clone, retro clone, you will know them. They are strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. You roll four six sided dice and you drop the lowest die. Or perhaps you want to choose from an array of pre generated scores presented here. When it comes to race, or perhaps races and species, there are four races you can play as in Castle Ultima, Humans, Elves, Dwarves, and Devil. When you select your player character's race, adjust your attribute scores by adding or subtracting the values listed in each race's description. You also get to choose one of its racial abilities to start the game with. Lastly, if you can't think of a good name for your player character, you can choose from the list in each race section. Humans get to select 4 different attributes to apply bonuses and penalties. Their hit points are somewhat decent, and they have racial abilities such as Adaptable. Choose one ability from another race. This choice is permanent. You also have Leader of Men. Double the number of hirelings that you can employ at once. And these are just a couple of them. When it comes to Elves, they have a bonus to Dexterity and Intelligence but penalties to strength and charisma. Their hit points are pretty low. When it comes to some of their abilities, they have Elven Magic. You gain the following spells. Aether Step, Brighten, Conceal, Darken, Slumber. They also have Planeswalk. You increase your movement speed by 10 feet. When it comes to Dwarves, they get a penalty to Dexterity and Intelligence but bonuses to constitution and wisdom. Their hit points are really good. They have abilities such as Firm Footing. Any ability or attack that would move you against your will must first pass your will defensive score. You also have Iron Stomach. You are immune to being poisoned or becoming intoxicated. Then we have the Devil. These are my favorite ones. They have attribute score bonuses in Strength and in Charisma and penalties in constitution and wisdom. When it comes to their abilities, they have Talents. Increase your unarmed melee damage from 1d2 to 1d4 plus strength. You also have Explosive Weapons Bonus. You gain a plus 2 when using firearms or grenades in attack checks. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about classes and professions. I really like the species in this tabletop RPG. Well, species and races, because remember, elves, dwarves, and humans are actually part of the same species in this RPG, which is a bit gonzo. 
This is due to magical effects, or rather a transformation that occurred in their original realm. There is a lot of variety when it comes to the race's abilities, so don't think that you are stuck in a particular archetype. And when you combine these races with the classes and professions, you can end up with some exceptional characters. For example, the elf normally looks quite fragile, but if you take professions and classes that are a bit more sturdy, then you end up with a character that perhaps specializes in melee while using spells. Thank you for watching this part of the review, don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham El Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pinned comment below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you, and see you later.